Welcome back, super friends and super family. I'm Nick, and today I'm reacting to Friends, Season 7, Episodes 9 and 10. So I've been loving this season so far. Just so, so fun. The last two episodes are really, really strong, and obviously we kind of have a longer arc going on between Rachel and her assistant and where that's going to lead eventually. I'm very curious to find out. As always, if you want to watch along the full unedited reaction that is up on Patreon, along with future episodes of this season of Friends, if you care to support, let's just get right into it. Friends, Season 7, Episodes 9 and 10. <laughs> Sure? Uh-huh. Helmet there. Thanks, Daddy. No, no. One daddy, <laughs> two mommy. <laughs> this is such a great father-son bonding thing to do. Sixth birthday, my dad took me to the park, got on it, and it bent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I had a bike of my own. What? Oh, dang. But the girl across the street, rainbow-colored tassels hanging off the handle. Girl. That sounds like my first bike. <laughs> Does it? My dad gave me his old one. Okay, okay, he wasn't joking. It had a picture of the bike on the front. I would sit on it and my stepdad would drag me around the backyard. Oh, dang. It's so unfair. Not really. I got to drag him around, too. You gotta love Phoebe's uh, positive attitude. Growing up, who did ride around on bikes? I definitely did. And that's actually how I got to my first job, because obviously I couldn't afford to buy a car on my own, so uh, I would bike to work. Good times. It was a good workout for work, you know what I mean? A couple miles biking there and back. I did. I actually got into an accident riding on my bike back from my first job. Got run into by a car. I was very fortunate. The bike was in bad shape, but it could have been way, way worse. Hey, what are you Christmas guys doing? This time. When the neighbors walk by, they can all take a piece. Someone's going to take more than their fair share. Guy with a mustache. <laughs> Smokes a lot, lady. <laughs> A red-haired guy who does not like to be called Rusty. Exactly <laughs> why I'm making this candy. Learn their names and get to know our neighbors. That's cool. Just moved. <laughs> good morning. Somebody's in a good mood. Someone had their coffee. Well, she's in love. I have a wonderful job where you can make out with your assistant. That's what makes us so wonderful. We stayed up all night coming up with a plan. Yeah, what's the plan? <sighs> <laughs> Going to let it be a pro <laughs> all night to come up with that plan. They're a little well, distracted. You know, we did other stuff too. <laughs> I don't sleep with guys on the first date. Matt Wire, Mark Lynn, Ben White. <laughs> <laughs> I love how Monica knew the names. That's amazing. Yes, at four. Hey, thank you. That'll be all. Will that be all? <laughs> that male guy had no idea there was something going on between. Okay, hard worker. This is required to hand in a performance evaluation. But you know. He seems concerned about this. I have yet to evaluate. <laughs> Dang, really? Really? Are you serious? No, I've just always wanted to do that. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty cool. Oh, dang. Poor guy got his hopes up. God, the neighbors ate all the candy. Not over, uh... <laughs> That's true, it's a possibility. Did Joey actually? Did you eat all the neighbor candy? So there's only a couple pieces left. Who? I all day. They love it. Okay, good. Oh man, I gotta go make more. I stole my newspaper. It's like a crime wave. <laughs> Ross. Oh, I love the contrast of their reactions, man. Told me that story about that bike. I didn't stop thinking about it. Did he get her a bike? <gasps> Dang, that is so nice of Ross to do. And I love you. Uh, Not that way. I think he knows. You a lot closer. Oh. <laughs> oh my god. Ross really is such a good friend, man. Best present I've ever gotten. Oh, and Chandler's about to cry. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Am not. <laughs> yeah, actually, I'm gonna deny it as well. Am brave. Can you tell me who is there, please? <laughs> the voice of a brave man. You know what time it is? Candy time. In the middle of the night? It tastes like little drops of heaven. Did you hear that? <laughs> That's all Monica needs. You live in this building? Seems like I would have remembered you. Excuse me. Mm. Night care. Can you imagine? That is pretty uh, insane, going to someone's place at 4 a.m. So did you read your evaluation? I sent it down to human resource. <laughs> oh my gosh, no. Please, you're kidding, right? I wrote that one as a joke for you. Oh, joke they would appreciate? Oh, no, no. No. Oh my gosh. <laughs> what did you oh, what a mistake. 
I thought you were a good kisser, that I liked your teeny tiny tushy. Oh my gosh. Not my tushy. <laughs> <laughs> it's all bad. It's all bad. Able to unhook my bra with minimal supervision. <laughs> Performance, I wrote, dear God, I hope not. <laughs> face a small pornographic sketch oh my gosh rachel <laughs> what are they gonna do this better not get rachel fired that would be such a bummer man Why every time somebody talks about titanic those two had only each other <laughs> i want to see joey's reaction i saw her this morning walking up by the park walking the bike why isn't she riding it does she not know how to ride? Do know how to ride. Of course. You guys gotta help her learn, dang. That's crazy, that's something to take for granted, but some people don't know how to ride a bike, right? Don't fall down, Phoebe. <laughs> this could be painful. Oh, shoot. I mean, it's not quite as good as her running, but it's pretty good. See? <laughs> All right, get some training wheels, let's go. No such thing as keeping secrets when it comes to having affairs. No such thing. <laughs> Jared was like, how did I get roped into this? Yeah. <laughs> as bad as I think. You know, maybe they didn't take it the way I meant it. Uh... Because tushy can mean both ass and good worker. <laughs> oh, I just gotta get the thing back. How? Might it have looked a little something like this? Oh my god, Joey! <laughs> How does Joey know? I came in handy before I could afford porn. <laughs> you draw his own? But I really need candy. I'm town today and I told them all about your candy. Dang, the legend is spreading. I told them your candy was absolutely indescribable. Dang, I want to try Monica's candy. It's, you know, little drops of heaven, but whatever. <laughs> yeah, not the best review so far. A woman who lives below you and has sex really loud. Well. Oh, right. She is? Yes, yes, please just give it to me. Yeah, that's, that's her. her. <laughs> Stop making candy. But they like it. You mean they like you. Jeff, so that people would like you? Getting people to like you, huh, funny man? <laughs> <laughs> Joey's face in the background was perfect. What's wrong with getting people to like you? You know, Monica's doing something she loves. She likes getting complimented about it. That's fine. Fine. Okay, here we go. Ready? This is so sweet of Ross, man. Like, how could anyone hate Ross when you see moments like this? You have to learn how to ride a bike. Why do I have to learn? I think you'll enjoy it. In case of an emergency. What kind of emergency? Zombie apocalypse. Onto your head and says, you ride this bus. Shoot, you. Ross, I think only you would do that. <laughs> Knock the gun out of his hand with a Chinese throwing star. <laughs> but she keeps in her purse. Let go. Let go, I swear. Okay, come on. Come on, Phoebe, you got this. Whee! Yes. Hey! Ross! Oh, no! <laughs> You're doing so well, I... I am shot. Shot! shot. <laughs> Roz, you just ruined all her trust. <laughs> Dang. Legitimate learning technique. Wow. <laughs> so much judgment from these strangers. Oh my gosh. Hey. Oh, dang, there's a crowd. How good is her candy, man? What? You don't know the system. Before your wedding, you may not see a lot of me. <laughs> oh, hello, liar. Dang, dang. I could have been killed, I hope you know. You did have a helmet. Oh, I know. <laughs> that's, a, that's the right response, though, Ross. I got stolen, and the police have no suspects. Really? Oh, my God. What the hell? <laughs> dang, that was a great what the hell. This guitar and never playing it. It's to be played. Kind of. Don't write it. You're, you're killing its spirit. Kind of understand what Ross is saying. Is dying. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Phoebe, save the bike. Care enough to make up that load of crap. Okay. <laughs> I love how Phoebe thinks the bike having a soul is crap, all things considered. Very happy. Okay, Ross. <laughs> Please don't die. <laughs> <laughs> that was a great twist, actually. Of course, Phoebe would believe that, right? Comes in early to eat her breakfast at her desk. Kind of sad. Yeah, well, Betty's kind of sad. Oh, poor Betty. I believe I can lure her away with these chocolates. I love this. I love they have a plan. Hello, Rachel. You, uh, got a minute? Oh, shoot. Actually, I'd like to speak to both of you. Oh, dang. Oh, dang. He must know. Thank Mr. Zellner. Maybe some chocolates. Not enough of a bribe. Give these to Betty. 
I read your evaluation of Hag Sweet Cheeks Jones. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I mean, obviously. <laughs> oh my God. How can they deny it? Imagine if there was. What w would happen exactly? <laughs> <laughs> future the company would be in jeopardy. The one who filled in that evaluation. Dang. I thought it would be funny. You have a cute tushy. I'm very vain. Yes. <laughs> I'm strangely proud of my butt. <laughs> what is what is this drawing? I can't figure out what this Oh my gosh. Upside down. You, but you know what? Doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, tear that up and burn it. Hey, it's not like I don't have a sense of humor. Naughty limerick every right now, man. <laughs> a lot of information we don't need. There's a time and a place. You, uh... I have a limerick right now. <laughs> Got my fax number. Mm. <laughs> you really want some dirty jokes or something. Go to a comedy club. That was really sweet. That was. But like this, I'd find work. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, you're great. <laughs> Don't get caught. I swear, what if he comes back in? So long to get that desk organized. <laughs> That was a close call. Thankfully, Rachel's boss is not too sharp here. Look at this, look at this, this is wild. Look at the lady smoking. <laughs> We're waiting for the candy. Yeah, lady, give us candy. <laughs> Joey's just joining the mob, I love it. Cannot smoke in here. <laughs> oh no. How long has it been, Chandler? Don't start again. 15 minutes for the chocolate to cool. They're complaining? Pipe, 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 pipe down. What's the matter with you people? I'm gonna start charging for the candy. A nice thing for you. Yes. Candy, so she could try to get to know all of them. Tell me her name. Am I right? What a great speech, Chandler. Candy lady? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, it's on her ID. If we know it, can we have candy? <laughs> Forget it, you've ruined it. Go home. You ruined everything, you ruined it. <laughs> Smooth, Joey. Way to switch sides. You're welcome. Did you smoke? Directly into my mouth. Yeah. It's a, a threatening note under the door. Uh, what? Sorry about that mob <laughs> mentality or whatever. <laughs> Joe, don't deprive Joey of food ever. <laughs> oh, look how happy Phoebe is. Ross, you're so cool, man. Faced your fears and ultimately overcame them. Horny Ross. It's not an after school special. Ross is a good dad, man. <laughs> Oh my gosh, oh no! Okay, well, ignorance is bliss. <laughs> Reservations at Michelle's Troth Couple. Betrothed. Betrothed. Ah? <laughs> uh, oh. What is that for? Phoebes? <laughs> Care to explain? It's my mom's. Oh my god! <laughs> my mom. It belonged to my mom. You can't phrase it that way. But even though it's Christmas, people still don't. <laughs> That's like what the Romans used to do when they'd have the victory parade. Like, remember, you will die. <laughs> It'd be good for Halloween, to be honest. Licorice? Sure. Yeah. And I get Ben for the holidays this year. Uh, nice. You gonna dress up as Santa? Nope. Why not? I want to take this year to teach him all about Hanukkah. Teach Ben about the Christmas skull, how people die. Uh, maybe maybe need not. to use this year to teach Ben about Phoebe. <laughs> <laughs> hey. No. How long was he in there? How long have we been home? Half an hour. Lovely. <laughs> oh, Joey is just so comfortable. It's amazing. But we got a holiday episode. This is always fun, man. Christmas season again. Change your last name to Bing. Monica Bing. Why not? Bing's weird. <laughs> Guys? Hey, Bing. I like how Phoebe said hi to Gunther. Carmen's gonna be ready soon, so I guess I'll be moving in. How much fun living with Joey? Told me. Oh. Gotta take care of yourself in this world. History teaches us nothing. I feel so bad for Phoebe, man. Bing doesn't seem so weird now, does it? Phoebe's had a rough past, man. Guess what Phoebe got me for Christmas? <laughs> Come on. You should join a band with Ross. Drums! <laughs> Don't hurt your ears. Hi, right, could we get two burritos to go, please? <laughs> Sorry, but not that sorry because you don't have to live with it. <laughs> a table for you in about 45 minutes. What about the reservation? Is this because of the burrito thing? <laughs> Dang, that's a bummer. Places like this are always shaking you down. Everybody wants a payoff. Is that true? Down O'Malley. I've never paid <laughs> like this, although I've never probably gone to a restaurant this fancy. Hey, I can be smooth. <laughs> <laughs>
a little quicker, I'd appreciate it. How much did you give him? The money in the wrong hand. Oh. <laughs> well, try again. Come on. I feel like you're going to throw up, do you? No. Well, I do. So let's <laughs> Time for a break for Dad. And you know what other holiday is coming up? Christmas Eve. <laughs> New Year's. Yes, but also Hanukkah. And it has reindeers that can fly. Maccabees. Jingle bells, jingle. <laughs> Made you out of clay. Rudolph the Red Nose. <laughs> it's a holiday war. I'm celebrating Hanukkah. No Santa. Oh. Is that bad? Oh, no, no, no. He might be too young to understand this, right? Favorite little guy. So Santa's coming? Yes. Yes! <laughs> How can you Santa's say no? Coming. How can you say no, right? It's impossible. It's okay, Ross. You can teach him as he gets a little older. No pressure. How do you know so much about this? Richard used to do it, didn't he? We'd be eating our soup right now. Oh, dang. Oh, dang. Bastard. <laughs> Is that really what you have to do when you go to fancy restaurants? Come on here, get their table. Oh my gosh. Oh shoot, oh shoot! Oh Chandler. <laughs> Too late. Oh, it's, oh no, oh no. People who have experience going to fine dining restaurants, please tell me if this is something that's real. <laughs> I mean, Joey's place is fun. It's undeniable. Maybe an unbearable living situation. <laughs> oh, that was the goal. Well, apparently not, so yay! Well, it's early, it's early. It could get tiresome after a while. Tequila! <laughs> they are having a blast. <laughs> oh, BB. She should just tell Rachel how she feels. You got there, put it there. Maybe don't do this. Christmas present that disrupts the entire building. A wrecking ball or a vial of smallpox to release... <laughs> minutes joey throws his sticks in the air my eye oh god my eye wait why does he do that drums to annoy rachel so she wouldn't want to live there anymore maybe be on some level <laughs> <laughs> on every level day look at chandler's face i understand you phoebe i'm not judging you could just not throw the sticks up in the air what is rock and roll about that <laughs> what is rock and roll about that hey i got you another present what could it be is that an aquarium a snake tarantula oh even worse no 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 yes joey that's the appropriate reaction sorry what was i thinking such a poorly constructed case. this would work on me what are you talking about i love that <laughs> of course of course go on fear factor rachel died because my cat ate it then my cat died dang that's dark it on me i think i feel like it's on me, yeah, me like, too. I <laughs> Does anyone have a pet tarantula? He's so adorable. God, the best. I'm glad you're having so much fun. <laughs> Our apartment is ready. I'm angry because... She's worried. I'd rather live here with Joey to try and drive me out of the apartment. Kind of, sort of. I've just gotten him a fish. You know how fish freak me out? Ish. <laughs> <laughs> Remember that for next time. If you're having so much fun over here... Oh, it's so much more fun with you. Oh. Funded me. We did. See you tonight. Ah, I would love to. Look at this. Look at this. Make the drumming stop. <laughs> <laughs> that is the perfect solution. You here to return those pants? No, these are my pants. That was such a long pause, Ross. Okay. <laughs> uh, Santa outfit left two days before Christmas. Uh, yeah. You gotta have something. <laughs> the holiday armadillo. What? <laughs> what is that? I'm a friend of Santa. Merry Christmas! That's kind of an amazing costume. Santa was unavailable. He pulled us back. You must be exhausted coming all the way from Texas. Santa's representative, Mexico! <laughs> Give you these presents. The lady will help me with these presents. <laughs> <laughs> Some limited mobility in that thing. Oh, dang. Careful. Watch the giant tail. I mean, it's kind of an incredible costume. It looks more like cosplay or something, right? Happy Hanukkah! I'm part Jewish. <gasps> okay, look at that. Armadillos also wandered in the desert. <laughs> that was good. Want to wander in the hall? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, that was funny. Years ago, a Maccabee! Oh, 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 oh no! <laughs> oh, shoot. Ross was doing so well. What are you doing here, Santa? <laughs> what are you doing here, weird turtle man? <laughs> I'm the holiday armadillo. Don't you remember me? Our part Jewish friend. <laughs> 
here to give Ben some present. Remember? What? <laughs> come on, Chandler, come on, help him out. Put it there. <laughs> Work this time if his hands weren't so damn small. Santa, no swearing. Said the armadillo and I will have a little talk in the kitchen. There's a sentence I never thought I'd say. <laughs> You were having trouble finding a Santa. Borrowed one from a guy at work. But why'd you wear it? You should have given it to Ross. Hanukkah, I mean, you're, you're wrecking my belly like a bowl full of jelly. Chandler's loving this role. I'll give the suit back. You think you can keep it another night? Oh, dang. <laughs> She's like the bartender from Bad Santa. Dad ever dress up like Santa? No. Then it's so good. <laughs> Oh my gosh. The same room for too long. Universe will implode. <laughs> That's actually the perfect reason. Merry Christmas! <laughs> Why can't the armadillo leave? Oh. Santa. Oh. Santa can stay. Hey, poor armadillo Ross. Will you sit here with Santa and learn about Hanukkah? Okay, that was cool, Chandler. Story of Hanukkah. Years ago, there were the no interruptions, please. The Maccabees. Oh my Merry gosh! Christmas. Oh my gosh! No! No! Oh! Uh, oh! Uh, Joey looks good in a Superman suit, though. <laughs> Look at this place. Oh, this is terrible. How? Oh, why? You said you were afraid that the landlord would, would find out. Do you really not know where I'm going with this? <laughs> wow! The, the new skylight. There's a skylight. Phoebe might want to live here by herself, right? You start looking for a new play? Phoebe wants it for herself. I'm saying that grandmother would not be comfortable with that. <laughs> Your grandmother, really? Oh, yeah? Starting to feel her again there, are we? <laughs> grandmother may be saying that you should live here alone. I hate packing. It's closer to work. Okay. I'm really going to miss living with you. You hear that? Hear that? Listen. Huh? I'm getting something from your grandma. What? To keep the one-bedroom apartment, Rachel, the purple chair? <laughs> This is fair. I heard it too. I do not hear that. <laughs> Superman flew all the Jews out of Egypt. <laughs> Moses can be saved for another time. Hello was actually not so thrilled about that part. <laughs> A Hanukkah candle. The Easter Bunny's funeral in here. <laughs> what a great line. Why is there a porcupine at the Easter Bunny's funeral? <laughs> Uh, Got it! Back in the cage! It's back in the cage! In a new cage. Such a baby! <laughs> Even Superman can be scared of spiders. It's okay. I do have fun as roommates. All right, so that is Friends, Season 7, Episodes 9 and 10. Two really fun episodes. Uh, I always love when Friends is taking place during the Christmas season, during the Hanukkah season. And we got to continue to see a little bit more of Rachel and Tag, and I just thought that was a very funny kind of workplace scenario. It is cool to see how happy both of them do seem together. It does make me curious, like, is there a chance this could be, you know, be something really serious between... He and Rachel, I don't know, but uh, I'll be curious to see as they continue with this storyline. But just the the anxiety they had when Rachel sent the wrong report, it was, uh, I mean, it was such a moment of panic because we see how much Rachel's career has meant to her and how hard she's worked for it, you know, and I'm watching along feeling the same thing, like, oh, shoot, I would hate for Rachel to get fired here after everything she's done, right? And, you know, there's kind of that tense scene with the boss. I mean, he must, I mean, it's, it's hilarious that he doesn't know, but... How could you not know when you read that what exactly is going on? But in that scenario, it was cool how Tag, you know, was willing to really put himself at risk and risk losing his job in an effort to protect Rachel because of that mix-up. And it does show that he's really a decent guy, you know, and he does care for Rachel, right? And then we have Monica, you know, <laughs> making some holiday candy. That does make me curious. I mean, Monica's candy must be delicious but she's doing it from a really you know good motivation to kind of get to know the neighbors more which is something I feel like many people kind of struggle with you know sometimes you're just used to living your own life and you know you don't feel particularly social sometimes when you go out or you just cross paths with your neighbor I feel like it definitely does take an effort to kind of get to know your neighbors and Monica was cool to do that especially during the holidays what a time to kind of go outside of your own shell a little bit you know spread some warmth spread some friendship around 
around, but that quickly changed into something else because Monica's candy was so delicious. And next thing you know, it's it's not so pleasant having just crowds of people hanging outside the door, people showing up at 4 a.m. asking for candy. I mean, that definitely, definitely is crossing the line. It does make me really want to try Monica's candy. I mean, obviously, it's impossible for many, many reasons. <laughs> One of them being it's a fictional show, but does that make anyone curious? Like, and does anyone make like homemade holiday candy? Because I imagine that that's just levels and levels above the usual candy. I've never been a huge candy person myself, but anything that someone makes themselves, especially if they're somewhat talented with baking or with making goods in general, can sometimes really just be amazing. But I love how Joey joined in the mob, you know? <laughs> it's like Joey's ultimate weakness and ultimate love is with food and you know there's just there's a purity about that in a certain sense but just the fact that he's lining up with everyone even though Monica and Chandler are like such close friends I just found that very amusing and then I really thought that was sweet how Chandler kind of stood up and defended Monica and um, basically told everyone to, to, to clear out but it's just, it's just cool seeing him kind of being protective of his fiance in that sense and saying exactly what needed to be said in that situation. On a side note, there was a quick line where they mentioned like Chandler was like, wait, so you're making all this candy so that people will like you? And it did seem that was kind of the core of why Monica does that and maybe why Monica does a lot of things and not to you know go too far into like an armchair psychologist here but I think that is a little bit revealing and honestly consistent with a lot of what we see in Monica's character and I just think that's true I think that it's a normal thing to want to be liked by people for whatever reason sometimes it has to do with you know how you're raised with your parents or what things were like how much attention you got in school or whatever the reason is i think it's a natural human tendency to want to be liked and i don't know i personally can relate to especially i think like in school putting in a lot of work for the desire to get approval and i don't even know if that's a bad thing necessarily i think it can be a dangerous thing if you're too fixated on pleasing others at the cost of yourself as we saw towards the end of the episode there where monica was like um you know stressed out you know trying to make candies that she's giving away for free for these people who aren't even being grateful towards her so that's where i feel like it can be something that's unhealthy i don't know i guess i don't have any fully formed thoughts about that about psychologically if that's healthy or not healthy or what you should do about it but if anyone has a clearer opinion or a more educated opinion about that just that type of behavior in general not specifically about monica but just doing something and working hard at something because part of you does want to feel loved i mean that's got to be the driving force for so many performers i feel like you know just from you know podcasts and things i've heard about actors and comedians i think there is an element of that involved in many people's kind of origin story for going into something like show business or even i imagine something like cooking right and like i said i don't think if there's i, I don't know if there's something fundamentally wrong with that you know kind of desire to please others unless it gets to a point where you're not taking good care of yourself and then we just had a super super wholesome storyline i mean so wholesome i mean look i am you know I, I i haven't been shy in expressing my just absolute admiration for ross as just a comedic genius i mean especially i feel like when Ross's character slowly transformed to become more and more unhinged and just out there in many ways. I mean, I love it. I don't get tired of the crazy scenes and scenarios. Ross has had so many just top tier, silly, ridiculous moments. But in a separate category, um, you know, Ross is really a decent guy in many, many ways. I mean, all of them are in their different ways in their friendships. That's what's so cool about friends. Like you're laughing, but then there's some really heartwarming moments too. And I just love seeing Ross um, taking the time to not only buy Phoebe a bike, which is so cool and so thoughtful after hearing that she never had one growing up but then to take the time to really teach her. And you just see that Ross is so naturally a really good kind of parental uh, coach-like figure. You know, he's just, he's so encouraging. He's so kind in his own way. And I don't even care if it's corny. I think it's just an awesome thing to see. And then connected to that, I guess we also saw in the next episode, Ross being a super cool dad with Ben. He got Ben for the holidays, which that's a cool thing. You know, Ross does love spending quality time with his son, which is not something every dad likes, right? That's that's something that Ben will really, you know, that, that's a gift that Ross is giving Ben 
that's going to change him for the rest of his adult life is just the love and attention he gets from his father, even though his father and his mother are separated. But it was just, it was just cool seeing Ross, you know, obviously trying to teach his kid about Hanukkah and about that tradition alongside Christmas as well. And it's, you, you can't re really blame Ben because he hasn't really been exposed to that yet. And it's like, of course, as a kid, your Santa, reindeers is just an easy thing to kind of be drawn towards. But Ross really put a lot of effort into making that Christmas, that Hanukkah special for his son. And just seeing the lengths he's willing to go, the humiliation of maybe wearing a crazy armadillo costume. Uh, and then that led just to a great scene in general with having, you know, Chandler in the Santa outfit. And then later when Joey showed up dressed as Superman, that was just a cool thing to have for a holiday themed episode. Oh, and I forgot to mention, we had uh, Chandler going with Monica to like a fancy restaurant. And like I said, I have not been to many fancy restaurants in my life. I mean, even the nice restaurants I've gone to, I don't think are that nice, right? So really fine dining, I just have no experience with at all. But is that customary that you kind of slip a little extra tip to the host? I mean, I've heard that like places like in Vegas, if you show up, I've never done this myself, but if you tip the person at the hotel, a lot of times they will upgrade you to a nicer room and things like that. And I do think it's a cool thing to tip. You know, tipping is really kind of something that a lot of people work in the restaurant industry rely on to pay their bills. You know, I've worked in the restaurants, not some fine dining place, but you know, tips are such a great thing to get, right? And that's, you know, kind of a big source of your income if you're working in the restaurant. But do, is that what you have to do to get seated? You know, like I know it, it'll never hurt to tip the host, but I just wonder how commonplace that is. So anyone who is more experienced, especially in like fancy restaurants, is that something that you do and that's kind of expected? Is that like a cultural norm in those type of places? Um, there was a moment about that kind of storyline though that bugged me a little bit. It's just uh, the fact that like, Chandler, I mean, it was funny seeing Chandler like trying and failing over and over again to be smooth with the exchange of the money. I mean, everyone wants to do that, right? Look, look cool like you see in the movies with people like passing the hundred or the 20 or whatever amount of money it is in a discreet way. But it bugged me a little bit when Monica was kind of being like, oh yeah, Richard used to do, I mean, she didn't say Richard used to do it. You know, Chandler put it together himself. But then Monica's kind of making comments like, oh, if I was with Richard, you know, we'd be seated already. I just... I think that's pretty unwise to do, especially if you're engaged with someone else, to be like comparing that person to an ex and then talking about that in front of the person that you're engaged with. You know what I mean? Like, I can't imagine that's something that makes Chandler feel good. I mean, he's making such an effort to do something nice for Monica. I guess I just don't think you're doing the relationship any favors if you know, even mentally, you're spending a lot of time comparing one partner to a previous partner. And especially if you're expressing that comparison in a verbal way to your current partner, I just think, you know, I'd be like, I would steer away from that in the future, Monica. But, you know, it's just a small little thing. It's not a gigantic thing, just something that stood out to me a little bit. I'm like, uh, I'm not a big fan of seeing that. And then of course we have Phoebe, you know, that she's excited to get their old apartment back, but then she's worried. She's worried that Rachel isn't, is having too much fun with Joey to move back with her. And of course, you know, a simple communication would have solved the problem, but instead we get the more amusing storyline where Phoebe is doing everything she can to try to drive Rachel away. And of course, none of it works. Rachel loves the drum set. Rachel loves tarantulas. By the way, who loves tarantulas? Let me know in the comments down below if you either aren't scared of spiders, love spiders, or have a pet tarantula yourself because I am someone who, you know, I have nothing, I have no grudge against tarantulas, but I could not have a pet tarantula. I think they're creepy. I'm not a big spider person in general. I just, I would be Joey. I would be Joey hiding in the Superman outfit that wouldn't be enough to give me courage against the tarantula. But I hope you guys enjoyed these reactions. As always, the full unedited reactions up on Patreon if you care to support the channel. It's also where you can watch future episodes of season seven of Friends. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, remember, be active, be mindful, and be a hero.